guys, what's up? Aru. <laughs> Have a cold. So, Silver Wolf, the galactic meme lord and redditor with 10 million light years of updates, is finally out, and all we need now is Bronya for preservation or abundance to complete Sele's harem of Bronyas. But who is this seemingly enigmatic, famous, and infamous character playing among us in her space station? Well, that's exactly why you're watching this. Welcome to another video of the most powerful hacker of all time. He's the most powerful hacker of all time. This video is gonna go over everything I could find about Silver Wolf. What we know about her backstory and her rise from disgusting basement dweller to intergalactic hacker, her abilities as the current legendary hacker of Punk Lord, and finally the Punk Lord mentality. Bear in mind that this information is only applicable to the current patch until we get more information and is subject to change in the future. Timestamps for every segment down below. Let's get started. No legal name, no identity number, and just a nickname, Silverwolf is an infamous intergalactic hacker from the planet Punk Lord and an enigmatic member of the Stellaron Hunters. But more importantly, she's a gamer, in every possible sense of the word which we'll use as context for the entire video. Along with her ability to hack almost anything in the massive expanse of the universe, she perpetually plays video games and treats everything that happens in her life as a video game. This follows the motto of every hacker from her world, known as the Punk Lord mentality. And the first game she ever played is called Basement. Yeah, she lived in a basement playing video games while working in a fast food restaurant under a so-called proprietress. Absolute gamer life she's living right there. This was Silver Wolf's childhood, and she comes from a group of life forms that are made or raised to find the truths of everything. A different breed of people in their planet of Punk Lord that are so good and focused at what they do that they just don't stop or get tired. Simply put, Silver Wolf and people like her who are also under the proprietress are just built different. And after clearing every arcade game in that basement, she finally finished the first ever game of her life. After finishing her first game basement and venturing into the world, she had one glaring problem that every gamer had. Silver Wolf was a loner. See, if you want to survive in Punk Lord, you need to have a party, I mean, team. So what did Silver Wolf do? Well, she made some friends, quite literally. Fabricating four friends, namely Friend, Demon Lord, White Collar, and Servant, she stores her imaginary friends into an intelligent weapon and starts her new game called Mount Scrap. Getting her first ever insurmountable job and soloing it with her friends, she finishes her second game without any problems. If you haven't already noticed how Silver Wolf's lore is like, it's basically every speedrunner's wet dream. But this time, it's real. Or is it? <laughs> this is double speed. On Punk Lord, you won't last long if you're a loner, and anyone who does becomes a legend. Silver Wolf, after soloing her first game, was well on her way to completing her next game, Rainbow City, which was her birthplace and where she played her very first ever game, Basement. Only this time, the reputation she created for herself has everyone wanting her. In jail, Silver Wolf and the boys partaking in tomfoolery finally made a name for themselves in the form of a blacklist. And just like her arcade games with nothing but her name, on it, she was also the only person in Rainbow City's most wanted list. So, what was her next game? See, because Silver Wolf was so infamous and overpowered in Punk Lord that she became a legend, there was nothing else in Punk Lord for her to do, or in her sense, play. She goes back to her old game, Basement, and thought of what other legends did after beating Punk Lord. She remembers the greatest hacker of the internet wars, Zero, who froze the network of the entirety of Punk Lord just to summon the IPC and go into space. The hacker of Aether editing technology, Sage, who raided a so-called Dark Zone and became a wraith of the inter-astral network. And there was also Stoneblade, whose rebelliousness led him to join the Galaxy Rangers and had a multitude of encounters throughout the universe. Finally, Twin Snake, a celebrity of the Oasis Zone and the lover of Stoneblade, who also seemed to have left for the stars. Every legendary hacker in Punk Lord ended with the same fate. And Silver Wolf, as the current legend of that era, so dramatically and edgy and cringe, she waited until four mysterious people came. A man, a woman, a metal humanoid, and another person. Sitting on her chair and looking back at the masterpiece that started her journey, the basement, she turns to the person at the door and joins this mysterious group without hesitation. The tutorial game Punk Lord was finally done, and the real game starts. Now that we've finished her backstory, what's Silver Wolf doing today? 
Well, as we like to say, right now she's gaming. Hacking whatever the Stellaron hunters need to hack while being an absolute menace to intergalactic society. For example, someone from her space station was tracking her down and what she did to keep him away was reverse hack them, sending out a bunch of spam and made an entire video game just to ridicule the futility of his actions. Just like old Modern Warfare games, Silver Wolf BMs anybody who fails to try and get her. She tries to maintain the so-called punk lord mentality that every hacker from punk lord follows. There can only be competition when there is rivalry, and there can only be excitement when there is competition. Life's a game and having fun is what's most important. Whenever she hacks something or does something of note, she makes it known to everyone that it was her that did it by leaving an insignia, intentionally leaving evidence for everyone to follow and fall for even more of her shenanigans. A proxy hack, a backdoor, a free pass, or even a surveillance pin. It all depends on the grand game that Punk Lord hackers wish to play. Punk Lord mentality is also the reason Silver Wolf and Skrulem are quote unquote rivals, and is the sole reason Silver Wolf came back to her the space station. Rivalry breeds competition, and competition breeds excitement. Paired with her being a member of the Stellaron Hunters, she's already on the wanted list of the IPC, which is the biggest intergalactic trade faction in the game. You might wonder if hacking is the only thing that hackers can do. Well, if she does get into a fight, she can always just teleport her enemies away into another location. This is done through her Aether editing ability, which allows her to edit reality like she edits a program. Interestingly, this ability was said to be a scientifically fringe phenomena, meaning it shouldn't exist in reality and are but simple theories and speculation. But because of the sage, Aether editing, which was deemed surreal and theoretical, bending reality and altering it to one's desire is now a standard to any hacker from Punk Lord. Similar to how you edit a game's files, hackers edit the reality around them to fit how they wish to play. Currently, there's very little knowledge about Aether editing itself, apart from being able to alter reality. Maybe it's akin to that of the Nihility or the Enigmata's way of altering history or their perception of the universe. Safe to say, Silver Wolf, as well as other great hackers, might have met him or found his inventions and got the same or similar ability. I say similar because other hackers as well as Silver Wolf's form of Aether editing might be different from the Sage's original Aether editing. And since Silver Wolf is also a hacker who uses Aether editing, her interest lies in finding an Aether cartridge. And what better place to find it than the simulated universe? The Aether cartridge functions as a second pair of eyes, a second brain, and a second heart to a Punk Lordian hacker. But more importantly, an Aether cartridge contains the journey as well as whatever experiences the Punk Lordian hacker had. And to every gamer slash hacker in Punk Lord, an Aether cartridge is basically another game that they could play. But this time, from the perspective of another hacker, or maybe even a legendary hacker. And such a powerful item in the hands of a legendary hacker would mean that the power to edit all reality, wouldn't it? Well, not exactly. As powerful as an Aether cartridge is, it has some limits. That being, it can't destroy a universe. Pretty weak, isn't it? But again, that doesn't matter to Punk Lord hackers. Compared to the excitement that comes with getting it, everything is of course a game. And if they're not having fun, then there's no point. And if that fun does stop, then just like every gamer on a losing streak, Sadly, that's all we know and what the Aether cartridge can do. It can edit reality, it has the recorded history of all the edited things that the user has done within that cartridge, and it has the ability to edit every form of reality. And maybe we won't ever get to see the power of an Aether cartridge, be it a copy or the original. This is the mindset and mentality that every Punk Lordian hacker follows. The Punk Lord mentality, that is to just let the game be. Or at least that's what the current legendary hacker and Gamer says. In Punk Lord, after a certain amount of years, a prodigy rises who surpasses all forms of games and hacking there is to be had and sets their journey for the stars to define what games really are. And throughout intergalactic history, a legendary hacker comes forth and gives rise to their story through their Aether cartridges. A role-playing gamer once said, Games are about growth. And the hacker Zero became the most terrifying player in the internet wars. A calm tactical strategy gamer said that games are about victories. And the hacker Sage created the Aether editing technology and raided the Dark Zone. 
a rebellious collaborative gamer, said that games are about encounters. And the hacker Stoneblade had countless encounters in his journey after joining the Galaxy Rangers. A loving narrative gamer said that games are about remembrance. And Stoneblade's lover, Twin Snake, was left with a letter for the universe. So what does the young galactic adventurer gamer say? A game is a game. And that's all there is to it. So there we go, Silverwolf's lore and the Punk Lord mentality. Comment below which Punk Lord mentality you follow and why, or just tell me how many memes you found in Silverwolf's lore, because there's quite a bit. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe as well as hit the bell for more of my content. The intrigue I have for this so-called proprietess that indirectly raises prodigies and Punk Lord and turns them into legendary hackers is just driving me crazy. Even Skrulem is aware of the Aether cartridge that holds the stories of these hackers. It makes me wonder where the other cartridges are and what stories of history it has within, or if Mythos can tamper with it or not. Or maybe if Punklordian hackers are blessed by the Enigmata for changing reality. Maybe Punklord is a planet under the Enigmata itself. Who knows? Also, update on the planets video part 2. It's gonna take some time until I put another one together. But we already have another set of planets to talk about. But that's it from me. I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoy subscribe and stay mad theorists. Bye!